Okay, it's about time, so I think we'll get started. Hello everyone, my name is George Dunlap. I am a committer, maintainer for the Zen project for many years. And uh, so today I'm gonna to be talking about reviewing. This talk is mainly aimed at uh, non-maintainers, since most of you are not maintainers, but it's gonna have some stuff for maintainers as well. I think it's a good opportunity for uh, just once in a while to talk about what kind of a community we wanna be and how we wanna communicate a bit. So the basic idea is that maintainers would love to have more help reviewing. We're all kind of overloaded, we have lots of stuff to do, and patches end up on the list for, list for kind of quite a while. But many people who are maintainers don't really know where to start. Why should anyone listen to what I have to say? So this talk is meant to help you with that. The basic idea is this. So often patches show up on our list and they're kind of in the not so perfect state. Um, and there's a range from sort of not so perfect to absolutely perfect. There's no possible way this patch could possibly be improved, right? Now we don't need to get it all the way there, but just a little bit before that is ready to be checked into the Zen tree, right? So the basic idea is that anything that you can do that will help move the patch from the not, you know, from the not so perfect state towards the ready to be checked in state will lower the maintenance um, lower the amount of effort that, that um, maintainers have to do and uh, increase the throughput and make everything better. Right, but first, do no harm, right? So there's a couple things uh, that are maybe not so helpful, right? So first of all, obviously, if you give feedback to so someone that submitted a patch, the maintainer then has to go and contradict and undo, well that's sort of, you made things worse and added effort to, that, to everybody rather than making things better. Um, so do be slightly careful when you're giving feedback. If you're uh, requesting a major change, um, have an idea at least whether this is the kind of thing that the maintainer would like. Um, another thing that's not so helpful, beat up the new guy. So it's easy, you know, I think particularly, um, you know, we, we sort of grew up and we're younger and smaller than everybody and then we're, you know, you, you go to university and you graduate and you're, you're the new kid on the block and you didn't know anything and everyone's telling, telling you that you're doing something wrong. And now, when you've gained some experience in the Zen community, you kind of know what the rules are and how to do things, and there's a new person that comes in and is breaking all these unwritten rules that they don't know about. It's just really easy, without even thinking about it, to get into the state of being like, aha, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, right? So be on guard against that, be careful. You do need to help pe bring people up to speed about the way that things are done in the Zen community and how to improve things, but try to make sure that you're not taking the tone of beat up on the new guy. Another thing that's not so helpful is looking for things to criticize. Now, this is something that even mature maintainers, um, we get into the mindset that we start to think that our job is to find problems with the patch. Our job is not, the job of a reviewer is not to find problems in the patch. The job of a reviewer is to discover if there are problems in a patch. What's the difference? Well, if you think your job is to find a problem, then if you look at the patch and you don't find any problems, you feel like you have failed. So one of the things that sometimes we, we end up doing, even as, as maintainers, is we look and look and look and look at the patch until we find some things, the tiniest thing that we can criticize, and then we feel like, aha, I have done my job, okay? Um, so try to avoid getting into that mindset, okay? Look at the patch, see if there is something to, that needs to be improved, but if, you ha if, if there's nothing that needs to be improved, then it's fine, right? Um, so yes, yeah, so, a helpful attitude is one that says, how can we get this patch checked in, right? You, the submitter, me, the reviewer, we're trying to improve this thing to get to a point where it can be checked in. So um, this is the thing, it's a, some of you may have heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? The idea of as a pyramid, at the very top is self-actualization, at the bottom is like breathing. And things, you don't care about things high on the pyramid when things lower are, are not right. So this is George's uh, hierarchy of you know, patch review criticism, okay? So the idea is that coding style is important, but there's no point in going over the coding style with a fine tooth comb if the algorithm is inefficient or it's not doing what it needs to do. And there's no point in, in you know, going over the, 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 uh, the effectiveness of the algorithm if the architecture and the interface are wrong. And there's no point in talking about the architecture of the interface if the patch doesn't need to be included at all, right? 
So start at the bottom and then work your way up. So first of all, to ask, is this patch necessary? Is accepting this patch necessary for, to help the submitter accomplish their goals? First question, of course, is, is it clear what the goals are? Um, if someone comes and submits a patch to, the, to Zen and you can't figure out what they're trying to accomplish, one of the first things you can do to help the discussion move along is to figure out what it is they're trying to do. And once you've figured out what they're trying to do, then just take a quick step back and say, okay, do we actually need to accomplish your goals? Do we need to change Zen at all? Or is there something we could do? Could we add a configuration variable? Could we sort of write it in a script, something like that? Now, there's no problem in, in, in modifying Zen if that is, actually is the necessary. But it is worth just thinking, if you can find a way to solve that person's problem without changing Zen, then everybody wins. OK. So once you've done that, then look at the, ar the architecture and the interface. So is this the best way to solve the problem? Is this the right part of the code to, uh, to modify? You know, uh, we're modifying the hypervisor. Should we do it in the, 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 the kernel or in the tool stack? Um, is this the right level of abstraction? Um, is the interface general enough? Is it too general? Uh, is it going to be forward compatible? Just think about these things. Once you've got that right, then look at the, the, the code itself, the algorithm, right, the functionality. Does that actually do what it's trying to do? Um, is it going about it in the most efficient way? Uh, does it handle all the corner cases and the errors correctly? It's pretty common for people to say, OK, I want to, when x happens, I want y to happen. And I don't think about, OK, what if z or a or b or c or d happens, right? What if things happen at the same time? What if things happen in an unusual order, right? What if something fails? Make sure that all the corner cases are covered. And once you've done that, then start to look at the quality of the code itself. Um, maintainability and robustness. Is it clear? Is it appropriately commented? Does it duplicate some other piece of code? Uh, could you refactor um, two things so that you don't have duplicated code? Um, does the code make hidden assumptions? It assumes that this thing is a power of two, and if for some reason it's not a power of two, then the algorithm breaks down, right? Is that documented? Is there an assert there that will detect that case? Does it introduce sections which need, which need to be kept in sync with other sections? Um, are there traps that someone modifying the code might fall into? Might they think uh, sometimes you, you know, there's a loop and it looks like there's an off by one error, right? Someone might come in, change it to so it doesn't look like there's an off by one error and actually introduce an off by one error, right? Is that documented? Is there an assert? Things like that. Um, and of course, style, right? So I'm not going to go into too much detail about this. Um, coding style is important. Um, look in the coding style documents and uh, help people get there once it's the right time. Uh, once you have that, then look at the patch. Make sure there's an informative one-line change log. Um, the full change log, make sure that the motivation for the patch is described. Uh, make sure that all the important technical changes are mentioned. Um, so when you were considering a patch, you have to think about three audiences that are going to be looking at that patch. The reviewers, people skimming through the, the, the tree looking for patches of interest, and an archaeologist. So the reviewer needs to find out, is this patch necessary? Is this patch the right way to solve the problem? Is this patch correct? Uh, you are now a reviewer. If it's not obvious from reading the patch that the answers to these questions help the person submitting the patch answer those questions in the change log or in the code itself. Um, so I'm looking for something, right? There's people who are going to be scanning through a list of things like this, uh, looking for patches to backport, looking for a patch which may have broken something, looking for a patch which fixes something, right? Um, make sure that the one-line change log is informative enough that people have an idea what the patch is for and, and whether they need to look deeper. And the last thing is the archaeologist. So this is someone 10 years from now, 5 or 10 years from now, who is looking at the code and trying to figure out why it is the way it is. And there's a principle called Chesterton's fence, which is you should never take down a fence until you know why the fence was put up in the first place. If you know why the fence was put up, then uh, you can say, right, well, Actually, we still need it. Or you can say, we needed it then, but we don't need it now. Or you could say, we never needed it, 
right? But until you know what the original purpose was, there's a risk that if you take it down, you will miss something. And uh, you know, I just had a, we just had a situation like this on the mailing list a couple months ago where the code was a certain way and two of the maintainers are going back and forth about, we should, you know, we should take this out, there's no reason for it. And someone else was saying it was there for, someone put it there, why did they put it there? We don't know. And I had to go back, you know, back to 2011 and read a big long discussion and figure out what the purpose of the, what that thing was there for and say, right, well, it, it was needed there originally, but it's probably not needed there now. That shouldn't have been necessary, right? The, that information about why it was that way should have been either in a comment in the code or in the change log. So you can help by making sure that kind of thing is there. Um, and a useful template that I use for a change log is to start with just say, what's the current code do? Why is that a problem? How does this patch fix it? And then anything else, oops, anything else that is needed to um, understand uh, any other changes that the patch is making, right? So if you have a change log that looks like this, then when the maintainer finally comes to look at the, the, the code, it's, it's, it's often simply a matter of verification, right? What does the current code do? Oh, yes, it does that. Why is that a problem? Ah, yes, that is a problem. How does the patch fix it? Great, easy. A um, Couple of minor reviewing tips, um, just to help understand a patch. So code follows data. So what I do when I'm coming to a patch, if it's particularly, lar particularly if it's large, I often just look at the header file changes first, right? What structures are, are added? What structures are changed? What structures are moved to, removed? That gives you an idea what the code is going to be doing. After that, I look at the patch in a couple different ways. So I look at the patch just itself, and Emacs or Vim diff mode is, is often quite helpful for this. Um, I look at the patched file, so look at the code in situ and make sure the whole thing uh, still makes sense. Um, and sometimes it's useful to have a graphical, graphical diff. So I switch between all three of these uh, methods when I'm trying to figure out what a patch is doing to help understand it. Right, so now let's talk a little bit about communication. Okay, this, I'm not gonna talk too much about this, um, but <clears throat> the one just simple thing that we can do to make things a lot nicer is to express appreciation. Right, so there's a huge amount of information that happens when you're talking to someone in person that, that gives the context and the tone to what you're saying. As a reviewer, we're often really, really busy, and after you've downloaded the patch, you've looked at it, you're trying to figure out what's going on, um, and then now you're ready to sort of go and, and talk about the patch, it's really easy to jump right into saying, oh, you did this, you did this, you did this, you did this wrong, right? Not mention the things that you did right, or not mention any level of appreciation. And often, even if you don't feel negative about the, the patch or the person who submitted it, it's easy because they don't know you and they, they can't see you talking right there to them. They, it's easy to feel that you're being really critical or unhappy with them, right? Just saying one or two things, true things, I'm not, I mean, don't say anything that you, that you, you don't think is true, but if you take a, a second to say, thanks for the patch, that changes people's entire attitude towards your criticism towards them. If it's someone who has been around the community for a long time, thanks for the patch, probably is a bit patronizing. So you can say things like, thanks for doing this. Um, looks, good, looks good, just a few comments. If the patch doesn't look good, but you think the change is a good idea, you can say, I think this is a good change, and then go on to describing the patch. Right? Um, it's a simple thing that we can do to just make the whole thing work a lot better. And one last thing I want to talk about is um, Try to avoid inflammatory language and stick to the facts. Uh, and if there's kind of one principle you could take away from communication, this stick to the facts is something that I think is, is really helpful. So to, uh, um, just to give you an idea what I mean, um, some of you may know that I was speaking Mandarin for several years now. A couple years ago, I found the most strongly worded dictionary entry I've ever seen, right? So I happened to look up for whatever reason, Wo Jiao, which is foot binding, okay? And the dictionary entry said, it's a vile, futile practice which crippled women, both physically and spiritually. Like, that's not what you're used to hearing from dictionary entries, right? Now, now I, I don't disagree with this assessment, okay? But the problem I have with it is that it doesn't actually contain much information, right? If you don't know what foot binding is, or you have kind of a vague idea what it is, but not really the details, 
you're not convinced by this. What's in here? It's like, okay, feudal, so it's kind of old, you know, a couple of things like that. But mostly what you find out is that the, um, the author of the dictionary has strong opinions about this. It doesn't tell you why you should have the same opinion, right? Now, compare this to the Wikipedia entry on foot binding, okay? Um, you know, binding usually start off in the winter months when the feet were more likely to be numb and therefore the pain would not be as extreme. Right? I'm not going to go into this detail about this. If you go to the Wikipedia entry, it's pretty dire, right? But you'll notice none of this is inflammatory language. These are simple facts that are laid out in a way which makes it obvious what the correct conclusion is. And so, and because it is entirely fact-based, it is more powerful and more persuasive than the strongly worded dictionary entry. And that's what I find, too, um, when, I mean, in a more simple thing, about talking about uh, people's patches. So there is a you know, very famous open source uh, you know, person in the open source world who likes to say things are like, this code is garbage and things like that, right? We don't do that in the Zen community. And there's two reasons for that. I mean, one is that it just, just makes, that just makes the author, author of the patch angry, OK? And they're spending their time and their mental energy trying to deal with their feelings rather than trying to come up with a solution to the problem, right? The other thing is that that doesn't contain any information, right? No one's gonna submit a, a patch if they think it, it's, that it's garbage, right? If they knew why you thought it was garbage, they wouldn't have submitted it in the first place, right? So if you just stick to the facts when you're describing things, even if you're angry about something, um, it's more powerful and more persuasive. Um, so, and one thing, other thing to say about that is your experience is a fact. So compare, for instance, this is confusing to saying, it took me a long time to figure out what, what was going on here, right? If it took you a long time to figure out what the patch was doing, that is a fact. And if you were a reasonably confident developer, then that is a problem, right? So you don't have to say, this is confusing. You can say, it took me a long time to figure out what, this, what, this, um, what was going on here. This is fragile, right? That's an evaluation. This seems fragile to me. That's a little bit better, because maybe you're just wrong about something. Or you can just describe, what you, what, describe the facts that lead you to believe that this is fragile. If x happens, then y will happen. Um, right, so stick to the facts. And yeah, I think with that, that is about all that I had. So here's our hierarchy of needs. And with that, I will take any questions. Or comments, snide remarks? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Say again? Oh, sure, 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 sure. OK, OK. Right, if the patch is so confusing that you can't figure out what the architecture is, then maybe breaking it down first might help. Yeah, OK, that's fair enough. And this, this is kind of a guideline, right? I mean, it's not a strict thing. And if there's parts of the code you know probably aren't going to change, you can nitpick the coding style on some parts while you leave the, just only talk about the architecture of the other parts. Anything else? Well, great. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>